Hello everyone, it's Char. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday. I love romance and in 2024 I decided I'm gonna try to be a historical romance girly. So that is what this video is. I'm super excited because for some reason this is just the mood that hit me when the year started and I'm finally getting around to it. What I do want to say is that I did a lot of research for historical romances and booktubers who typically do historical romances romance videos, getting a sense of their favorite. So I wasn't just picking willy nilly. But if this video goes well, and I really end up enjoying the books that I'm reading, then I will pick up more historical romances throughout the year, including some that I never heard of as part of my goal for the new year. Without further ado, let me tell you about some of the books that are potentially on my TBR for the video. I say potentially because I went a little crazy <laughs> with all of the historical romances. And I have a few options. What I'm kind of feeling now is Beverly Jenkins with Destiny's Captive, which is a historical pirate romance. I also have One of Scott Ties the Knot by Tessa Dare. I've heard that Tessa Dare is a really great entry point for people who typically don't read historical romances in that they're like contemporaries essentially, but set in the past. So they're a lot easier to understand. This one is One of Scott Ties the Knot, which is a trope that I love because in this one, <laughs> our main character is having her first season where she's like going to find a potential spouse but she's like ah mm. I actually don't want to do that. So she pretends that she's in a relationship with this man that no one's ever heard of and he's Scottish and he's a warrior and he's so protective and he loves her and she's like telling everyone this is it and writing letters to like this person. But he finds out and he's like, actually, I will marry you. I also have a Lisa Kleypas, which was available on Libby. This one is Stranger in My Arms. And in this one, we're following a woman who was married to this man who she really hated. He was genuinely such an awful person and he goes off to sea or something and he dies and she's like I'm free I'm about to live my best widow life because widows have more freedom than like unmarried women they were married and they were widowed and they can now kind of do whatever they want but her husband comes back he comes back from being lost at sea and she's like oh my gosh why is this man back but he's completely different he's like sweet and gentle and loving and caring and she finds herself falling for him but she's also very confused because she's like my husband was a dickhead so who the hell are you so I'm excited for that one and then I have no earls allowed which I don't know what it's about and I don't know who the author is but I'll pop the cover here of course if I end up reading it in this video you will hear the full summary for me. And then finally, I have The Spitfire, which I'm not going to attempt to give you the summary of. I think I know what this is. But I've read a lot of historical romance summaries, and I might be confusing it with someone with something else. But I have the audiobook for this, which will be perfect because today I want to crochet. So I'm going to get into it. And I'm going to start with the Spitfire because it was already on my TBR for a Galentine's Day like readathon I'm doing on Riley's Patreon. So I'm going to make sure to make time for that. So I'll see you with my updates when I finish this book because I realize I fucking talk a lot and we want to make sure that this video isn't 3000 hours long. All right. Besties. It's some time later. How much later? Not even I know because I filmed that intro so long ago, but I finished book one for this video, which was The Spitfire, which by the way was on Kindle Unlimited with the free audible narration. And the audiobook is really, really good. So if you're looking for that and you're a KU person, I would recommend it. I really love the Spitfire. The general premise of this is that we have a woman who used to be, I believe they called them Lady of the Night. She was a sex worker due to some circumstances that forced her into that position. And she talks about that throughout the story. But one day she is walking through the streets of, I want to say East London, and she sees this man badly beaten, surrounded by two men who are very obviously about to end his life. And she's like, you know, mind your business, mind your business, mind your business. But she can't so she steps in and she saves him because she has a gun so she draws it on the two men and she's like back off or I'll kill you so they leave and she saves his life but it turns out he's the Earl of water something I want to say water stones 
but I might just be thinking of the bookstore and that is more likely than that is his name. But he is the Earl and not only is he the Earl, he is very actively trying to create this police force in London so that there was more safety in the streets for all people. His sister was the victim of some attacks. So that's like his driving force and what he's going for. She saves his life, never tells him anything about her, but he's completely obsessed with her. They run into each other again because he drafts this bill that ends up closing her music hall that she has been saving for her entire life and her goal with that music hall is to really give women opportunity to find work off the streets and to not feel taken advantage of by men so she's trying to provide people with another opportunity for work he closes it down she's pissed and I loved this book so much. I gave it five stars. I mentioned earlier that one of my favorite parts of historical romances and what I really enjoy is when we have a really strong female main character and our female main character is hella strong. She takes no shit from him. When she finds out who's behind the drafting of this bill, she hunts this man down and beats the shit out of him, <laughs> decks him. And he's like, a woman beat my ass? Yeah. She did. He caught those hands. Listen, I'm not saying violence is the answer. But you know, he was fucking with her. He was. So I really loved it. I gave it a solid five stars. It just reminds me of how much I am in the historical romance mood. So the next book that I'm going to be picking up for this video is one that I saw Wiley reading in one of her most recent reading vlogs, which is from Duke Till Dawn. This book is available on Scribd. So I'm going to be listening to that. It's relatively short. It's like eight hours in total if you're listening to it in one time speed. And this one also features a strong female lead, which I didn't tell you in the Spitfire. Our hero is a virgin, which I just loved the reversal of that because normally it's like, she's a virgin and blah, 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 blah. No, he's a virgin <laughs> in the Spitfire. So Duke Till Dawn, I think Duke Till Dawn is a story of this woman who is a swindler. You know, she runs some scams largely with men. So she ends up meeting this man who she knows is hella wealthy and she manipulates him via lots of methods to give her a lot of money. They sleep together and she kind of sneaks off and doesn't tell him anything. So when he, she disappears, he's obsessed with her. He's like in love with her and he's like, oh my gosh, I've got to find her. He calls her his lost queen and he's been looking for a very very long time one day his friends kind of sneak up on him and take him to a gambling hall and when he's at the gambling hall he sees her and he's like oh my gosh it's my lost queen so smitten so in love until he realizes that she scammed the shit out of him <laughs> and it's a love story so i'll see you with my either updates on that on final opinion honestly these books are short so i feel like i read them faster than I have an update for you. So I'll see you whenever I see you. It is nighttime, but I have an update for you. And that is that I'm almost done with From Duke Till Dawn. I only have about 50 minutes left in the book. And I wanna give you my opinions before I finish it. Number one, this book is kinkier than I thought it would be. Why is there a scene where he's like kissing her and she's like, yes, I want you to punish me. And they go to a sex club at some point, like a BDSM 4G kind of sex club. But I am really enjoying it. It's not my favorite historical romance so far, but I do really like this. And I think that if you're a person who enjoys romantic suspense, or you like a little bit of a mystery going on, or you want to just get into romantic suspense, I wouldn't call this a romantic suspense, but the general like subplot that's going on is very interesting. And I think has that tension and I can't spoil anything but we just got to a scene at the end of the book I'm like oh yes yes I can see where that's going and there's like an undercurrent of angst throughout this outside of like the chemistry that these two characters have of course you're rooting for their love story there's angst here because they come from such different stations so yes those are my thoughts those are my opinions I'm gonna go ahead and finish the book now and I'll see you uh in the daytime with better lighting hopefully to give you my final thoughts on from Duke till dawn so I did finish from Duke Till Dawn last night, which I really enjoyed. I gave it solid four stars. All the things that I was saying in the previous clip still stands. I think that this definitely leans more romantic suspense. And there was a point where I was like, are they actually going to get together? I mean, obviously they're going to get together because that's the very definition of romance. But I didn't see how this was going to happen. And the way that they got together genuinely just made me laugh. It was a solid four star and not a five star just because... I don't know. It was a feeling. 
I don't think there was anything necessarily wrong with the book. Maybe I wanted more romantic elements, but I believe the relationship between these two characters. And I'm very happy that they got their happily ever after. Honestly, I'm in such a historical romance mood that I could read historical romances for the entire month. And I most certainly will be doing more historical romance videos. But I think I'm going to finish just two more historical romances, maybe even just one more. The next one I want to read is No Earl's allowed which is on audible plus so i want to listen to that audiobook i'm gonna see you with whatever book i decide to read next but i'm so happy that this video is going so well a five star and a four star like that is fantastic hopefully the next one is a five star read as well it is a bright and beautiful monday morning and i am officially 50 percent of the way through no earls allowed when i tell you I was just on my little walk listening to the audiobook and the very first chapter is trauma because our hero is a soldier who has returned from war and he was on a very very brutal mission which he led and is suffering from PTSD and the very first chapter is you hearing about all of his memories of the battlefield and how much he is struggling in his day-to-day -day life and then of course we have our heroine who is also dealing with very traumatic things in her life including the very recent death of her sister she is running an orphanage with 12 young boys and she is in way over her head it's in a very very like dangerous area in London and her father sends our hero out there to say bring your ass home of course she's stubborn and she's strong-willed and she feels like she owes it to these boys to provide them with a safe and comfortable and loving environment so she refuses to leave and that introduces us to our story but when I tell you does this cover not make you think of soft gentle romance does it not scream playful comedy it's not it's angst and you know what if you're a historical romance person you're probably like yeah this author always writes angst but I'm a newbie and I picked this up and I was like oh my god why is this so heavy it's heavy like of course there are humorous moments throughout this and I love a character driven story and the 12 little boys in here are so sweet and so cute but of course they have their own like dark and complex stories because they're children from very very poor families who have for one reason or another ended up in this orphanage in a very dangerous part of London I love them so much but I'm like god damn and it's not just their backstories that are sad the female main character is being harassed by like this drug lord this crime lord in the area essentially saying you're gonna fuck me or i'm gonna kill those kids i cannot i could not the angst in this i want to say it's like super high but like it's very emotionally tense and there definitely is a lot of sad things in here so like check the content warnings besties this cover may scream lighthearted romance but this story is not a lighthearted romance finish no earls allowed and it was a four star read for me i really enjoyed this also my headband is doing this you know pretend that it's not doing that it was so much fun to read about this couple and their relationship and i really love the dynamics of the orphanage that she was running and those 12 little boys who had my whole heart i also really appreciated how the author was weaving in very complex conversations and heavier subjects without taking away from from any other aspect of the book meaning that it was very well balanced throughout the story and I did really appreciate that the only thing that stops me from giving this a five star is that it's very very action-packed which isn't a negative thing at all I just want to say that it's very action-packed in terms of the things that are happening in the background and I can't emphasize enough check content warnings because there are definitely heavy subjects addressed throughout this regardless of its very cutesy historical romance cover but our main female character is strong-willed and stubborn and I love a strong female character but that her major character flaw is that she's naive so she rushes into things and she thinks that she can find a solution for everything when the reality is she doesn't have any concept of what real danger actually like looks like and the real threat that exists to her 
and the children that she perceives in any tangible way and at times that can be annoying because as the reader you're frustrated by some of the decisions that she's making not to an extreme extent at all I just want to point out like yes that is a case and she herself acknowledges that she is naive and ends up in a situation towards the end of the book that she really had no business being in because she did not understand how the London underground actually works and how much danger she was actually in something else that I really enjoyed about this story was I forgot his name immediately y'all I just finished this book not even two minutes ago he has a group of friends from like his time in the war they've all returned from war and they're very strongly bonded as brothers and I love how protective they are of each other and the ways that they support each other throughout this story it was such a good time which brings us to the end of this video where I read three historical romances and I loved each and every one of them my favorite continues to be the Spitfire but the other two were also really fun to listen to I think that listening to audiobooks right now is the way to go for me but there's so many other historical romances that I didn't get to in this video so you bet your ass there will be a part two and a part three because 2024 is my year of being a romance girly and I am absolutely here for it and I'm here for exploring the subgenres of the romantic world that said thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe and I'm going to see you in my next video bye <laughs>